My name's Josh Weber. Uh, I've got a wife, four daughters, and uh, I've been attending Agape City uh, since the launch last year. This is my story on sobriety. I was uh, invited to Spring Hill Camp when I was about 11 years old. I knew I wasn't supposed to bring food. I packed it anyway, uh, and I got caught with it. Instead of being in trouble, he asked me if I believed in Christ. He would be someone that I would like to be like, sure, but I don't know that I believe yet. And so he, uh, he just gave me a simple prayer. He told me, ask for forgiveness, uh, thank him, and ask him to be in your heart. Even though that counselor taught me that prayer, I still had anxiety. And when I found alcohol, that helped with that anxiety. So I had the prayer and I had alcohol, and those two things were just competing against each other. In college, as the drinking progressed, I found myself caring like less and less about my grades. I was anxious and depressed and every other thing you could think of. And I just decided I needed a reset. So, you know, I'll move back home. I'll see what happens and we'll go from there. Well, I moved back home. I did get a good job right away, but drinking and waking up with a hangover and trying to perform your job well was impossible. I had drank the night before a lot. I drank a bunch of coffee during the day. And then later that night, I had a massive panic attack. I ended up in the hospital overnight. And I, and I knew that my drinking was causing me problems. I struggled with panic attacks for 10 years. Alcohol took my driver's license away from me. It took my college degree away from me. It took away my first good job. It took away my everything. Now I'm married and I and she has three daughters. So we're, we're together. These girls are seven, nine, and 11 at this time. And at that point, my drinking escalated. I was drinking as much as I could without feeling totally sick. Um, so I was still functional, I, I was working, but I could feel something change after Penny was born. And it was like, and as she got a little bit older and I could see that she was like watching me. When the pandemic started, watching the cans accumulate in our garage because you couldn't take them back, bag after bag, week after week, it really opened my eyes to that. And it really, it took about six weeks into the pandemic and for me to snap at Michelle and one of my other daughters to say, this, is, this, has gotta, this has gotta end. I told her that night that her opinion didn't matter because she said that I was drunk. Did you want me to put Penny to bed tonight? Because it's getting late. I just said, I'm not, I'm not drunk. And I, and, and, and how dare you? Nobody cares what you think. And, and that was, that was, that was it. That was, that was like, that was like, that was all the evil that my dad would have said to me back in the day. I don't even know that he would have said that to me. I woke up the next morning and I, I apologized to Michelle. I apologized to Emma. That was really like my, my rock bottom. I ended up finding a community of people on this naked mind after reading this book that Annie Grace wrote. The book was about controlling your drinking and that, and that appealed to me because I could keep drinking and control it. But when I, when I joined the group, I started to read all these posts and realized that they've had months and sometimes years of sobriety, something clicked in my brain that said, maybe you don't need to try to control drinking. Maybe you just need to not drink. How about that? We'll try that. I gave Michelle a hug and I went into my room and 
I listened to all of them out there laughing and having a good time. And I thought, do I really even need to have one or two or three? Like, why would I want to wash away the voices of those people that I care about so much? <laughs> By the grace of God, here we are. I'll be celebrating four years sober next month. I got down on my hands and knees, crying, asking God to change my life. And I didn't just mean stop drinking. I just meant make the pain go away, please, because I'm, I'm tired and it's going in the wrong direction. As soon as I did that, something opened up and the things that I was looking for, they started to appear one after another, after another, after another. All of my life, I compared myself to my dad. I always knew that I wanted a better, a better life. I wanted to break that cycle of just bad after bad after bad. Sobriety has given me hope. It's given me my purpose. It's, it's given me a life that can be joyful, a good relationship with my wife. It's given me good relationships with my daughters. I have God to thank for that.